Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. So now it's time to feed the weasel. Weasel's another very excitable uh, snake when uh, food is available. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely puts on a show. Boy, oh boy. Now don't drop it on the floor. Oh, you mangled it right open. Oh. There you go. Now come on, let's... You have to be resistive, don't you? He wants to take out food. Now, you have to keep your eye on him after you feed him because uh, he's an old guy. I've had him since 2008 when he arrived as a baby. And I think he's, uh, he's uh, trying to remember how to snake periodically. Uh, it reminds me of the Larson cartoon of the... Uh, the w female snake uh, and the two kids around the table and the mother snake says to one of the kids, uh, why don't you shake the rat uh, so uh, grandpa <laughs> will eat? <laughs> um, I'm sure everybody has seen it, but, but that's, you know, how I sort of think of, uh, of the weasel. Um, you know, sometimes he's savaged the rodent just like you saw him demonstrate and he'll sit there for a while and then a few hours later I'll find the food item left in the cage that he's done nothing to it other than mangled it uh, and then he, usually I can get him to grab it again and then 99% of the time on the second uh, round he, uh, he'll actually swallow it down, but you have to keep tabs on him because I've I found the rodent left in the cage uh, overnight when he's decided for whatever reason not to eat. So we'll let him go and do his thing, uh, and again we'll move on. Now, Mr. Kazakanovi. He is a springy little guy. He's very, uh, very Whoop. excitable. Oops, it's that time of night where uh, all the lights go out. Don't look at me like that, spicy. Um, I didn't do that. Um, the They go out, and not the uh, ones on the other side of the room. The overhead didn't go out. There we go. Yeah. Alright, so, <laughs> believe me, it's no fun when the lights go out and you have a uh, venomous snake uh, uh, that you're working with. There's Mr. K. Oh, he's happy camper. Come on, give me back my forceps. There you go. <laughs> it's like we don't feed him, but he's, you know, a good weight. He doesn't need anything. Uh, we found that <laughs> if we want him to move away from the glass when we're trying to open it, we just uh, spray him down and he goes scurrying to the back of the cage, <laughs> all ticked off. So. Um, okay, we have a little bit of uh, feeding to do. One of the baby coral cobras. Hi. Would you like that? Huh? <laughs> Just like your mother. There you go. Um, 
we'll, uh, the water dish really needs to be replaced, but we'll just give it a, some fresh water for tonight since it's close to lights out. Okay, and here's the boy. These are the two remaining coral cobras out of the clutch of six that hatched. And he just recently transitioned to uh, to pinks. Um, he was eating only uh, frozen thawed uh, geckos at the start, and uh, I got him transitioned successfully to uh, mice, as you can see right off the tongs. Uh, the way I did it was, is I start them on the geckos, I, I fed them three or four times with geckos alone. Then I put in, uh, I took a frozen thawed gecko, I opened its mouth and I rubbed uh, the head of the pink in the mouth of the gecko. I put what I call gecko spit on it. And then I put them both in there. and. After one or two tries, he not only ate the gecko, but he ate the pink, and then eventually I transitioned him to, uh, uh, to mice directly. So this is all very nice, and when it works this way, sometimes it doesn't. The little pile of poo is still going to have to be force-fed, uh, but we're not going to do that now. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to do the baby water culvers, uh, you can see a little baby uh, girl in the back there and I want to I'm sort of not quite ready for this but um, what I usually do is what I'm doing over here right now is um, they've been eating five pinks if I throw them in their water dish one two three four five um, and increase it one to six, and then I grab the old water dish and pull it out, and I put the new water dish in there with the new food items, and shut the door, and then usually unless they're in shed the next morning uh, they're all gone so here you can see uh, what I do is these are just room temperature so it's one two three four five six they may or may not eat them all, but uh, the point is that it's nice if they eat some of them. Oh! No! <laughs> well, this is a problem. You must be going into shed, but how can you swim in poop water like that, huh? Alright, so this is going to take a little finesse. Um, and a hook. So, uh, I don't really want to play snake hockey with you. So, she may not eat, but I will give her the opportunity to eat, since I'm sure there's other gluttonous snakes in the room that would eat these pinks. Go ahead, move your little tail. You can go back in your swimming pool here and <laughs> as soon as I, I do it, but um, that, she was pretty well behaved because Water culvers uh, can uh, be very difficult to deal with. So now we'll just clean those bowls and uh, uh, we'll call it a night. All right, so we're going to feed Mr. Speck here. It was very cute this morning when he realized that I was home and it was Saturday. He came out from his hut, motored out to his little uh, feeding position there. Yes, and is very eager to bite my fingers, but we'll avoid that. 
Now, Mr. Speck, you know, is is a problem because, you know, we feed him small morsels like this, and he tries to stuff them in half. And if you give him anything large, even sometimes this size, you know, he won't fully digest it. He'll regurgitate it. And, you know, you can see this lateral crease here, which means that, you know, he's not fat or anything, but, you know, he's on the slender side of being properly nourished, and, um, you know, if you're not digesting your food and you're throwing it up, you know, after a couple days, he digests a good part of it, but for some reason, he's, he's always been a problem feeder since he was born. Mm -hmm. Oh God, uh, when was he born? In 2016, June 30th. So he's, you know, um, five and a half years old or so now. He's always been a problem feeder. And, you know, I had to force feed him for the first year or more. And then he got feeding. Uh, but he's always not done well when you've given him large food items. So we keep it small. And we try to feed him more often, uh, but even then, you know, he'll regurgitate and not fully digest the meal. Um, so it's a bit worrisome. Uh, you know, I'm really fond of the little guy. Uh, so is Laurie. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is just uh, what we have to deal with. We're doing the best we can. I've had offers from people that wanted to buy them for breeding purposes because they have a female but no male. Um, but I refused to relinquish control of them because, you know, I put a lot of effort into them. Uh, you know, he's doing reasonably well. He could be a little bit more filled out, but I have this, you know, I just know that if I give them to the you know average keeper um, that he'll end up dying um, you know I sold his parents and uh, the blithering idiot uh, managed to kill the female uh, I'm not sure how he did that but uh, um, yeah this is why I'm reluctant to relinquish control of any animal into anyone's hands except you know, some very accomplished keepers that I know, zoos or venom labs, who really know how to take care of these animals. Um, not your average reptile enthusiast uh, who thinks they know it all, uh, but someone who really does know what's going on. So I'll let Mr. Uh, Mr. Speck there eat and uh, get that all down although he'll want more but we might give him another little morsel in a day or so we'll see how he does but that's our progress on Mr. Speck so this is the Gloyd's Cantile he typically hides in his hut and does that <laughs> and uh, we'll eat it later. He's a very secretive little snake. Uh, we put him in uh, the big vision cage because um, I really wanted to get him and the female uh, out of these bins over here because I think uh, uh, you know, the, the Gloids can't heal. These are very nervous little pit vipers that are in the Achistodon complex, which it, you know means that it's a a copperhead and cottonmouth uh, related uh, genus. Uh, that's what all your cottonmouths and copperheads are, and these are sort of called the Mexican moccasins, and uh, they're very very nervous. And I think they would really come flying out of here if slightly provoked so we work with them very carefully and this is why I want them in a big cage where um, there's you know we can keep the glass 
closed mostly and uh, uh, prevent them from making a exit uh, without authorization. <laughs>